Hi, I'm Nancy LT Hamilton. Uh, welcome to my studio. Actually, today we are we go a little afield of the studio over to Chimera Arts in Sebastopol, California, where I was fortunate enough to be there when my friend Hannah Campbell brought in her sodium sulfide to color her copper cuffs that she had made. Um, my, our friend Brianna was also there, and so the three of us went outside and watched as Hannah worked, although we did run errands and I did film, so we weren't completely worthless. <laughs> so I'm kind of interviewing her through it, and she's giving me great answers. Um, the, there's two methods that we're going to be covering in this video today. One is, is the sodium sulfide. The other is involves heat and hot water. One is toxic and one is not. Um, and I really stress to you that if you are going to be using sodium sulfide, that you read a lot about you know the safety hazards that are involved with this chemical. It's a pretty hairy chemical. Uh, one of the items we read said that if you get any on your clothing, strip immediately and shower. So I don't work with many products that I have to strip for if I get it on myself. So what you want to be wearing are all chemical proof things like you want to wear go chemical proof goggles and a chemical proof apron and chemical gloves like nitrile gloves um, and a respirator. I would wear a respirator. Just remember to check on disposal. I would imagine a product like this has to go to hazmat. So don't dump it down the drain. You don't know what you're doing to our water supply if you do those things. So, And don't bear it in the backyard because I know a lot of you do that. So anyway, let's get started with the video and uh, see what happens. Hannah's going to be using sodium sulfide to turn her oh, copper man. red. And here we are outside of Chimera getting ready to do that with Brianna <laughs> and me. All right, she just added a couple of these I'm crystals. I'm literally just waiting it to um, dissolve. Spritzing, getting the paper. I'm going to see if it's going to be strong enough. Usually, I think it turns a little bit more. Are you ready? It might start. Yep. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh my goodness, look at that. And... And then she just... You have to blot it. Blot. Oh, wow, that's really an awesome patina. Yeah. Can you see it? And block. And block. So is that paper damp that you're blotting? No, or? no it's, you're, just, it's, it's just dry. to get the, it off so it stops patinaing. Because look at how cool oh, that looks. That's great. That's gorgeous. Right? Oh, I'll show you later. Well, that's pretty awesome how that turned yeah, out. Yeah, I can't wait and to I see it. And I guess if I theoretically put Everbright on it, it'd be nice and sealed. Yes. And would be really good. Exactly. So this is the one that's going to be <sighs> tricky. What to do? Let's see here. Look at and it will. So it will only start to get darker. Oh wow. My seam. I, I didn't do my seam super well. How so can, can you it. stop it from coloring? You can't really. Okay. So the, what you see here, it's really bright, but it's not gonna be quite that bright. It's gonna get, well, one, it's gonna get darker just as time goes on, and then two. Oh, stuff stinks. Sorry. No, it's all right. It's not your fault. <laughs> I don't know, it's the same answer. Okay, now she's doing her cuff. She's got it wrapped in the paper. I'm not too concerned about the inside as much. Notice she has nitro gloves on and she has um, eye protection for chemicals. Okay, I need to take it off as soon as possible, which is the fun part. Voila. And it's just going to continue to develop, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, and you can get these really cool blues, too. Wow. 
Look at that. Wow, it's iridescent. Yeah. So the iridescent will see. This is what happens is when, um, when light. you seal it, it will go down. But I think uh, Brianna had a really good point about this cuff and trying to buff some highlights, maybe a little bit. That might be a good. Way to yeah, you'll have the copper shining through. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna do one more cuff, and this time we're gonna dunk. Or Hannah's gonna dunk. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that works be better. So the heat isn't an issue though. So the heat yeah, isn't affecting the color. I think it's the, the application. Color. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at I that. I think it's the application. The quantity that you're getting on there. Yeah, and like if I was even able to somehow to it less time, like so you know I had to flip it. Yeah. If I made more of this and I just dunked it and took it out, yeah. then it would probably get more of those colors. Because right now it's already turning blue, like kind of immediately. More of the pink. Pink and like blue. So blue's at the longer end of the spectrum. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Well, I'll have to take some pictures of those right after you wash them. Tutorial, folks. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yay. Do the clapping again, please. Thank you, ma'am. So I recently read another recipe for creating reds on copper that seemed pretty simple, so I thought I would try it. Essentially, I'm going to heat this piece up to red-orange using my butane torch, big one, and I have a pot of water that I'm going to bring to a full roiling boil. Alright, we've got a boil going on our water, so now I'm going to light my torch. Looks pretty reddish orange to me, so we're going to throw this in. And I don't know how, he didn't say how long to keep that on, so I'm just going to turn it off. Whoa, that was wild. <laughs> See what's happening. Oh, it's very purpley red, isn't it? Well, I went back and reread the directions, and it said when the metal has reached the temperature of the water, which means I don't have to wait for the water to cool off. So I'm going to get it out of here. It's a nice color. So I'm going to rinse it in cold water now. Here's the finished piece. It's mostly uniform, but I think part of this is that my finish wasn't uniform on here. I, I just pulled it out of a, my scrap box. So maybe if I had sanded this all evenly, it would have come out a little more uniform. But I'm going to try it again. So um, this one I sanded and washed with uh, alcohol. This spot here, it's I think there's a little piece of steel or something on there. See how that's all this color there? But besides that, that's a pretty uniform color. Um, I wanted to see what would happen with steel wool and then also the pro polishing pads to just bring up some of the copper. And then I'm going to try the pro polishing pad. Now the next thing to see is how long this patina lasts with no finish over it. So I think that's a pretty awesome color and totally non-toxic. I mean, I did the whole thing in my stove in my kitchen. So I'm excited. Yay! So time is up. Must run. Must run. Actually, <laughs> always have something more to say. Have you noticed that? There's so much information out there. Anyway, um, I wanted to show you this book. I'll have a link to it. It's a really good patina book. It has chemical and non-chemical um, ways to color metal, divide up by color. Nice pictures. I always like good pictures. So thanks to um, Hannah and Brianna 
and my kitchen stove. <laughs> Come again. We always have something interesting going on over here. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Have a great day. Bye. Ha <laughs>